So we come to number two of the 18 form Qigong sequence part, uh, called the basic names at the moment, opening out the chest, and that is exactly what it is. Uh, nice simple names at the moment before they go more far out. Um, but it's three forms together. So I've got the eight brocades, which we've done. So this is the first two of the next 18. So it's 10. Okay, 10 of the whole 35, because there's a nine form at the end of the 18. But again, that doesn't really matter. Um, you can either do these in sequence, as I've put them, or you can do them separately, because we go a lot into the breathing, the most important part, really, the movement you can pick up and play with any, any way you like. And that's all it is, really, mind candy. It's just movement. That's all it is. So don't get too caught up in it. There's so many different forms of Qigong, or Qigong, whatever you like to call it. Um, and again, you know, it's movement at the end of the day. Obviously, there's specific meridians. It's benefiting within the forms. Um, again, you know, there are like bending, where generally there's quite a lot of common ones, like bending ones will help the kidneys, uh, generally go down a urinary bladder tract. Um, Again, a lot of the opening up the chest ones will hit all the organs in the chest, etc. Heart, lungs, pericardium, like this one will. Um, but again, you can, you know, what you focus on, you move towards. If you put your mind on a focus and you know the meridian or whatever, or know the organ, you know, and you want to do that, do that. There's nothing set in stone with these. People get so set in the form, that's the only way to do it. You know, and I know there's years of tradition, but again, it is movement and... Again, you can focus on anything you like. You know, it could be what, what you actually focus on, you move towards. So if you're focusing on a meridian or an organ, you know, then you will go to that um, as you're doing it. I digress a bit there, but um, again, someone will agree with that. But again, you do see sometimes different Qigong postures that say different things, different organs, etc. So, you know, that just tells you if you put your focus on something, it will happen. It's a bit like a placebo um, effect. But anyway, I digress there. So again, nice, simple one. Um, as with a lot of the sort of um, really good Qigong postures, they open out the chest. And again, anything that opens out the chest, as the move says, is good because we spend a lot of time compressed against gravity. So again, that's going to help us breathe properly, etc. So let's go straight in. We're going down the yogic Pilates and hypnotherapy path with the breath. Bit of a mixture of breath. Um, again, it is just breath, synchronised motion, so don't get too caught up in it. So again, let's go in with the breath. So zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals, take the navel towards the spine. Now that's bringing in the Pilates principles of throwing on that corset that powerhouse, that girdle of strength, three layers deep, which is all segmentally stabilized in the spine, the transverse abdominus. Okay, now again, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals. If you want to know where your pelvic floor is, get the two thumbs together, go from the B line, bikini line, belt line, or whatever you want to call that, and then meet here. And that's where the corset muscle, the transverse abdominus, three layers deep, and the pelvic floor meet. Okay. The transverse abdominus wrapping around your spine, three layers deep. They link on like cling film. Okay, so again, if you go around this big line again, thumbs come round from the hips, and if you cough or sneeze, <laughs> everything comes in. So again, from here, again, as you zip up pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, one won't go without the other. And as with that cough and sneeze, you can feel everything come in towards the spine. Again, it's good to know that. Sometimes a bit like an amnesia, if you don't know these muscles are there. You can't use them in a correct fashion. If you know they're there, you can use them in a correct fashion. Okay, just like the three layers of abdominals. Again, you know, you've got the corset, the deepest one. And again, think of a little rip cord on your belly button, pulling in towards the spine. Now again, let's go in with the breathing. We're breathing in through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips. If you're sort of blowing out a candle through pursed lips, now that's lateral thoracic breathing. That will naturally help you breathe into these fish gills, 3D style, organ deep, cell deep, even bone marrow deep, into these lower lobes of lungs, intercostals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. As though someone's opening an umbrella inside your rib cage and letting go, or someone's just pushing out from inside your ribs and letting go. Just adding width to the lungs and length to that out breath. You can imagine you're breathing to a scarf, wrapping round your ribs 
and you breathe into that scarf while I'm full. Lovely. Now again, that will naturally happen as you breathe into them fish gills because there's nowhere else to the breath to go. Unlike a traditional form, we're zipping up and scooping out the abdominals, so that breath goes in low and deep into these lower lobes of lungs, into costals, the ribs, anywhere but the stomach. Breathing through the nose and exhaling through pursed lips. And when that exhale will work like a cough or a sneeze, <coughs> help you gather in, zip up and scoop out the abdominals. Now, we're gonna change that, go a little bit down, more down the yogic path, close the mouth. We're gonna breathe in for the nose and out for the nose. As you still zip up the pelvic floor and scoop out your abdominals, that becomes more similar to some versions of the yogic breath. There's lots of different versions, but the smaller filter for the nose in your sana will help lengthen the whole wheel cycle of the breath. Okay, so that really helps with your asanas, etc. And again, we're all in these movements, these Qigong movements we're gonna do. Now that whole wheel cycle, as you do that right now, as you're zipping up pelvic floor and scooping out your abdominals, same deal, will lengthen, but you will naturally feel right now that out breath wants to lengthen longer than the in breath. Okay, so just simply allow that to happen without even trying or try not to try. And as you allow that out breath to lengthen longer than the in breath, Okay, you'll consciously take your mind to that out breath and lengthen it, quadruple it, double it, triple it, whatever you like, the out breath, make it longer than the in breath. Rather than the breath breathe you, you're gonna breathe the breath. Okay, you're gonna consciously take your mind to that out breath, the breath within the breath, that elongated out breath, really lengthen that out breath within your limits, don't force anything, okay? And as you do that, as you allow that simplicity to relax the mind, okay, that will help the subconscious part of the mind come into play. Okay, so the in-breath's conscious thought, the out-breath is subconscious thought. So by extending the out-breath longer than the in-breath, we're just encouraging sleep, digestion, rest, and relaxation to all be benefited. Even cellular communication, organ function, the process of elimination and assimilation within the body, that health and renewal, all being benefited. That lovely chemical cascade to relaxation is really felt as you elongate the out breath, longer than the in breath, not force anything. Again, that comes a little bit more sort of hypnotic in the hypnotherapy way. Everyone's count will be different. Very similar to 7-11 breathing of five and 10, in for five, out for 10. We're not counting, but again, that will naturally be happening. Everyone's count will be different. Just elongate the out breath longer than the in breath. It could be slightly longer or a lot longer. Quadruple it, double it, triple it, and simply allow that simplicity to relax the mind. Safe in the knowledge, that's doing all its internal housekeeping of the body, okay? And benefiting you on a cellular level as that manifests. Every single organ, cell, sinew of the body, allowing that relaxation just to soak in like ink through blotting paper into every single organ, cell, sinew of the body. Just feeling them restful relaxation responses and endless streams of comfort on that lovely elongated out breath. Lovely. So we're gonna link this, we're gonna calibrate and synchronize the breath for the motion, integrate the breath for the movement. So we're gonna come to a really simple one to start off with. Again, stand, you know, soft knees, shoulders down. Again, not going too much in the movement here, but again, we've got that breath going. Now, actually, if you do wanna take it on further, I just remembered, if you want to take it on further to more advanced yogic breath, you can go to Ujjayi breath. Now, Ujjayi breath sounds like this. You grip at your esophagus, you breathe in. And you exhale. So 
you'll feel that lovely raspy silky sound from the back of the throat that ujjayi breath victorious breath in sanskrit okay seashore breathing it's like breathing through the nose as you grip at the esophagus watch your shoulders though we want to come up on that ujjayi breath and as you exhale it's like going ah, with the mouth shut Okay, and that'll even further lengthen the out breath. Now you're breathing in out from the nose. Okay, that smaller filter through the nose, but you're also elongating the out breath with that grip of the esophagus. Okay, and that will stimulate the thyroid gland, which helps with weight control, etc. Helps to build the heat in the body, helps us fan the fire, to burn all the toxins in the body. Ujjayi breath, victorious breath. That gives the mind something to focus on within the form. Okay, so the natural focusing breath we do when we're trying to do fine motor skills, etc. in everyday life. We have a little sigh, but again, we're overemphasizing that. So that really gives that mind something to focus on as you become aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath, no matter what breath you're doing. If you can't get this, don't worry. Then just stick to the breathing we're doing. If you get the Ujjayi breath with it, great. As that weaves a tapestry of relaxation, be aware of the sound of the breath, the feel of the breath. Lovely. You know, sort of Darth Vader breath there. That lovely silky whistling sound from the back of the throat. We're going to link it to the really basic motion. Shoulders down. Remember, 90% of us are overactive in these upper traps. Hands are moving like seaweed on the bottom of the seabed. Breathing in and exhaling. Just sort of squeezing the big accordion. As you open out the chest, be loose with the hands. Heart, lungs, pericardium. Again, if you're being static, nice and soft on the knees, zip up pelvic floor, scoop out your abdominals, navel towards the spine. Again, if you want to add a little bit of instability, then all you're going to do is kick, sort of like a back cat stance here. Again, you can just take the leg back, breathe in and exhale. And then come back, take the other leg back, the partially empty it and come back. If you want to take it on a little bit further, you nearly sort of come to a warrior. So again, over a Vajrasana. So again, you can empty the back leg, gathering against the instability, navel towards the spine, breathing in and exhaling. Shoulders down, okay? Breathing in and exhaling. If you wanna come up further, you can come up further. Exploit the rain speed and tempo to suit you, manage unique to you. Breathing in and exhaling for as long as you like. If you get there before, put the foot down and carry on that elongated out breath. If you stop the movement, carry on that elongated out breath to get them parasympathetic nervous system responses. Breathing in, here, or really empty it. And come back. Again, if you want to come higher, you can come higher. You could be here, you know, really coming up higher. Gathering. If you're going to put that leg down, put it down and carry on the out breath. If you can match the breath the movement then great nothing set in stone but again just elongate the out breath for as long as you like and start again okay again nothing set in stone everyone will do this slightly different make them unique to you okay your union of your mind and body so you've got paint and rainbow next that was number 10 of the whole 35 but number two of the 18 form qigong sequence added on to eight brocades but paint and rainbow next bang